right, buddy Joe, part two. Yeah, you know, Poncho the parrot um, was really smart. It, when we got Poncho, my brother was just a baby. And, uh, of course, he used to cry when he was hungry. And my mother would feed my brother. And the bird saw this, you know, through those eyes. And he noted this. And so what he did is he learned to imitate uh, my brother crying um, to get food. So he could he could sound like a baby. He could, you know, no, it sounded really realistic. But anyway, he would do this whenever, if you walked in the room and you had a cracker or something, the bird would go into this crying thing because he wanted a piece of the cracker. And of course, that's not good for the bird. So you can't just give the bird a piece of everything you're eating. So uh, you have to kind of turn it off and you know you learn to ignore the bird um, just like you know the clock that's ticking on the wall you don't hear the clock after a while um, you, you, occasionally you'll notice it wow it's ticking wow, it's been ticking all along I never noticed that but uh, but yeah he learned how he learned how to do that um, those were interesting days that was about 1962 or so it was before people put gates up in front of their doors and uh, you know people used to leave their doors unlocked in the city uh, and there were door-to-door -door salesmen who'd come by, uh, you know, a floor brush man, knock on the door, sell you brushes. And uh, one Saturday, uh, the whole family was home. My father was home, too. And uh, there was a knock on the door. We opened the door, and it was an insurance salesman. He was, he was selling life insurance. So he gave his pitch to my father. This is good for the whole family. So we actually all sat down. The whole family sat down in the kitchen. Um, uh, to listen to him, and he sat down. I, I remember... I was sitting straight across from him at the table and there was my brother and my parents and he went on talking about life insurance and the value of life insurance and how it would protect the children and and I'm sitting across from him and I noticed that he was getting uh, subtly more and more nervous as time went by and then he started to sweat you know and he was starting to sweat but he was still going on with his pitch and finally he just stopped and he and he and he and he stood up and he said in my 20 years of going door to door, I have never met such terrible parents in my life. And we all looked at him, I, and he, he pointed to the living room, and he said, Your baby has been crying in there for 20 minutes, and you haven't so much as batted an eye. And we realized that he was talking about the parrot, because the parrot had been crying. I guess he heard that we had food. You know, we served him some food. And so the whole family, we all started laughing. He was horrified. He backed up against the, the kitchen counter as if we were a family of monsters, that we were so cruel to laugh that the baby was hungry and crying. Uh, so my father brought him in. We all, we all walked him into the living room and showed him Poncho the parrot, and he was, he was shocked. He was like, it's a bird? It's a bird. Yeah, it's a bird, man. So, I, I mean, I'm sure if the guy's still alive, he's telling that story uh, to this day, the policy he lost because of the parrot. <laughs> yeah, man, they're smart. You know, any predator, any predator has to be smart enough to strategize, to out-strategize its prey, you know, to think ahead of its prey and predict its prey's movements. So, predators at least have to be smart you know they have to have a cognitive facility um, you know and my cats I, this is what blows me away we've got this arrogance this vanity that somehow we are superior to the animals and yet my cats outsmart me every day huh if I were really you know, intellectually superior to the animals could they could they outsmart me you know they do it all the time they manipulate me you know uh, I'm putty in their hands emotionally too you know as well as the little uh, intellectual tricks they pull on me um, yeah we have to develop more uh, EQ emotional intelligence you know because um, we're just as well but and also you know there's animals like we don't know what senses animals have I mean animals obviously what well, we call them instincts wow how about that they just know where to fly and they'll fly all the way across the planet and uh, they're just right I don't know or do they navigate by the stars uh, who knows what senses animals have that we might not have you know we have at least five physical senses uh, you know they might have six or seven you, porpoises I understand because they use echo sort of echo locations you know uh, they can actually they uh, I understand that they get three-dimensional images of the world they can see inside of people uh, I heard some story about how they can even diagnose medical problems but I don't know if that's true but uh, that's just an urban myth maybe or a, even a rural myth hey how come they never talk about rural myths um, 
But in any event, there may be actually truly different senses we wouldn't know would we I mean you know um, and if there's a different sense that means the mind the brain would work differently and the mind would work differently and the whole view of the world would be different it would be a different kind of intelligence um, you know a different kind not just better or superior or inferior you know in this this sharp vertical scale but completely different you know how would we cope with that and who knows you know if we develop emotion I mean uh, artificial intelligence maybe it may develop something like that uh, but I, I, you know, I don't think we should write off the fact that there may be just some entirely different sense that an animal has. Um, uh, yeah, it would give it different powers. Yeah, man is the measure of all things, huh? Huh? That's the old saying. I, I know we try to measure everything, but I don't think we're the measure of all things. I don't think we should consider ourselves uh, the measure of all things. Yeah, we're driven by our appetites, and we add new appetites, artificial appetites, all the time. Um, I'm looking at my notes I took from your video. Yes, we have choice. Um, uh, animals, uh, you know, follow their their, their pattern, but uh, we do have a choice. So, you know, I, and I always think we should choose on the side of compassion, you know. Um, um, we think we're so smart, but we are, we can be the most horrible creature on earth. We really can. I mean, uh, we can do we can do horrible things. Uh, we, we are strange. We are the st <laughs> if we're an animal, we are the strangest animal on the planet. Truly, truly strange. Uh, yeah, I think I talked about. Uh, you'd mentioned people who are you know view things as biochemical machines. You know, talking about that parrot. When I was about seventeen. Uh, uh, a friend from high school came over, one really friend, an acquaintance from high school came by and uh, we went in the living room and there's the parrot, you know, laughing. The parrot would laugh, dance, he'd do all kinds of things. And um, this guy told me, well, the parrot doesn't actually feel anything. I said, what do you mean it doesn't feel anything? I've known this parrot all my life, you know. It feels things. I know it feels things. Uh, well, no, it's just imitating. And I said, no, it, it, ha it, it he told me it doesn't have emotions. I said, look, it, it has emotions, you know. It has. It's alive. It has emotions. And he said, well, you know, my father's an ornithologist and sort of pulled this authority, scholarly authority of his father on me. And, you know, I, and I think it was the only, one of the only two times I ever threw anybody out of my house. I threw the guy out of the house and said, get out of here. What? You're going to throw me out of the house because, because of a parrot? I said, yeah, because of the parrot. Get out of here, you know. Um. That's how arrogant he was. He thought that he was superior to the parrot, so how could I throw him out of the house, you know? But the guy had no um, no sense of, of uh, no empathy. with. The, he couldn't understand that the thing... I mean, I think our assumption should be that all the animals are like us, you know? Not that they're not like us, and then that the animals have to prove to us that they have emotions. That's ridiculous. Um, um, you know, and emotions... Emotions are um, uh, really well. We call them feelings. They they are uh, they are linked to uh, pain and to pleasure. You know more so than the mind. You know the mind can sort of distance itself, but somehow the emotions maybe they're halfway between the body and the mind, huh? You know and partake of both worlds. So maybe the emotions are actually richer and more balanced than our minds. Um, Authority. Oh, on the topic of authority, you know, that's interesting. Uh, whether or not there's authority, I don't know. But you know, I think at times we admit a certain priority. Like if we're starving, you know, and we need to survive, uh, we might consider permissible to kill an animal. So there's a sense of priority of need, uh, though that's not authority. It's just priority, and we sort of uh, figure that that's excusable. Also, uh, feeding our families. Um, my grandfather uh, used to raise snails in the backyard, and he would cook the snails. We would eat snails. And uh, I remember once I was a little kid, he, picked, he was an old man, too. He was much older than, uh, he was, uh, he must have been uh, in his 70s. I was must have been about eight. He uh, picked up the snail once. It was alive, and he looked at it, and he said uh, to the snail, um, I'm sorry, my friend, but I must feed my family. I must eat you. We must eat you. But don't worry. When I die, your family will eat me. So I thought it was crazy. When I was a kid, I thought Grandpa's crazy. He's talking to a snail, you know. But now that I'm older, I kind of think that's that's cool, you know. Um, 
Uh, what did I miss? I'm running out of time. Yes, I guess I am out of time. All right, buddy Joe, I'm really enjoying talking to you, man. Thanks, thanks a lot. And thanks for bringing up all these great questions. They're really creative stuff, um, and really, really interesting. And uh, I'm enjoying them. Um, and uh, so that's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye, buddy.